out of hospital cardiac arrest is a common call in EMS. And we have to figure out not just the treatment path that we're going to take, but also if we're going to continue resuscitation. And there is a predictive factor in end tidal CO2 to tell us if our efforts are beneficial to this patient and continuing in this resuscitation. So let's check this out and we'll have some fun. that more and more services and more and more schools are teaching to use end tidal CO2 for cardiac arrest management to making sure that we're actually getting good flow with this. And so now we're starting to use end tidal CO2 in order to determine how good perfusion truly is. But we're not, we need to make sure that we understand why it's a good tool in these particular situations and how end tidal CO2 can look at perfusion of the body and perfusion of the lungs in order to determine how good CPR is truly doing here in the body. So let's check it out. Okay, so let's talk about this end tidal CO2. So you have a patient that's in cardiac arrest, you're performing CPR, and you are ventilating this patient to try and maintain some sort of perfusion, some sort of oxygenation to the cells of the body. That's the whole goal of CPR in order to basically achieve ROSC, which is the return of spontaneous circulation. And so what we're noticing is that in patients that have a um, end tidal CO2, when we're monitoring end tidal CO2, if they have an end tidal CO2 above 20, they have a much better chance or likelihood of a return of spontaneous circulation. And why is that? And it's because a end tidal CO2 above 20 is telling us that we have a decent amount of cellular respiration. We have a decent amount of perfusion that's making it to the lungs, which is telling us that our efforts are actually not a waste of time by any means whatsoever. Whatsoever. And so that is what we're looking for. And why are we looking for this number in particular? Well, what that's telling us is that we're actually blowing off enough CO2 in order to produce 20, okay, 20 of our end tidal or respirated out and CO2, which means that we have a decent amount of CO2 within the blood as well. And the only way we really have CO2 in the blood really is because our cells are going to put it into our blood during respiration. Okay, cellular respiration. So if we have decent end tidal CO2 being respirated out, it means that our cells are still being oxygenated. They're still going through some sort of cellular respiration, which tells us that they're being perfused at a little bit at least. Now, why are we seeing this 20? Why are we shooting for this 20? Or why are we even seeing a CO2 number at all? And what it is, is that our efforts during CPR is allowing for blood flow to the lungs and out of the lungs in order to basically be circulated. And so the higher this number is during cardiac arrest, during CPR, the better our perfusion is, the better our perfusion in the lungs is, allowing us to see respiration out of the lungs to tell us that we have some sort of cellular respiration going on at the cellular level and we're pushing hard enough in order to flow blood enough through the lungs to see a decent, decent output of CO2 as well. So that's why we try to achieve this number right here when it comes to end tidal CO2 and cardiac arrest is one, it tells us that we have some sort of cellular respiration, good news, and two, it tells us we have decent flow because of our efforts of, CO, of CPR through the heart, into the lungs, and through the rest of the body. If we didn't, if we had an end tidal CO2 number of say eight and our CPR is fantastic, that's telling us that we have not a whole lot of cellular respiration going on in the body. Those cells are no longer functioning at a cell at a met metabolic level and are as a respiration level, which is telling us that our efforts are pro very likelihood, very likely not going to produce the ROSC that we're looking for. And if we have a patient that quite commonly will be sitting around the kind of the 15 mark, that's a good thing. That's telling us that we at least we're getting closer and we have some sort of perfusion going through the lungs as well as some sort of cellular respiration going on at the cells, or we wouldn't see that CO2 number at all being respirated out. Okay. So that's what we're trying to do and achieve getting above a 20. Okay. And that would tell us that we have a higher likelihood of ROSC of that patient because we have cellular respiration occurring and we have good perfusion through the heart and the lungs that could 
precipitate to a return of spontaneous circulation with our efforts in, in CPR protocol. So that's what we're looking for. Another thing that I like to talk about is that when we are starting our cardiac arrest protocol, what I want to do is I want to put an entitled CO2 on as early as possible. Let's say that we put that entitled CO2 monitor on this patient at the very beginning of cardiac arrest, and we find that their entitled CO2, let's say, is um, let's say is 13. Okay, we put it on. That's 13. And we're like, okay, so that's not where we want to go. We want to try and get higher than that. But let's trend up in that direction. So you get someone that's on CPR. And let's say you get working on an advanced area. Let's say we get on doing an IO. We get kind of caught up with the whole management of this patient. And then we look at the entitled CO2 and we notice that their entitled CO2 is, say, 9. Okay, That is actually a pretty good indicator that it's potential that your person that's doing CPR is now fatigued and they're not actually compressing the heart enough with their CPR that we're actually slowing flow through the lungs um, because of the, the lack of movement that's happening because that provider is now getting uh, really fatigued. And so that could be a really good indicator and a good catch for you to go, oh, we need to switch out providers, get someone that's more fresh in there. And then you can start seeing that as soon as you get a fresh provider in there, after even a few compressions, you'll notice that this number will likely go up and telling you that that's a pretty good indicator that we have more perfusion going because of better CPR efforts. So it's a quick little catch for you just to make sure that we are not um, essentially losing perfusion and losing cellular respiration simply because our providers are getting tired and that's where mechanical CPR can really come into play um, in these particular patients but again it all comes down to how much our cells are still able to perfuse and so if you have a patient that's been down for a long period of time so if, for example a patient was found and they've been uh, unconscious and in cardiac arrest for let's say 45 minutes before you arrive and there's nothing that's being done, it's very common to see a very low end tidal CO2 because of no cellular respiration happening at the cells, which means that we have very little expired CO2 despite our efforts in CPR, despite our efforts in trying to oxygenate that patient, which is why they have a much lower likelihood of ROSC because of how long they've been down. Thanks again for checking out this video on entitled CO2 in cardiac arrest. There's a lot of things to learn here, just like using entitled CO2 to predict whether the ROSC is actually a likely thing or if we should be term terminating our resuscitative efforts. We can also use it to determine how good our compressions are and if we need to change out a fatigued partner. There's a lots of great benefits in watching the waveform as well as looking at the number for predictive values. So hopefully you got something from this. If you want to learn more about this and how medical directors are seeing end tidal CO2 being used in EMS, go ahead and check out the article on the GEMS magazine. The link is just below. And we'll talk to you next time.